Hello folks, I'm going to be doing a little experiment with my Lady Palm Rapus excelsa, and um, this is a fairly cold tolerant species, um, listed as hardy into zone 8b, some say 8a, basically zone 8, um, so sort of like sable palmetto um, in terms of hardiness, and uh, I, uh, I got mine a couple months ago from my local garden center, I believe it was 35 bucks, and now the ones this size are a bit smaller are actually 80 bucks or 85 bucks now they're 85 bucks now so the prices have jumped up a lot i don't know what it is but i believe i got mine for 35 bucks so um yeah prices have jumped a ton anyways glad, glad i got mine when i did and um i've, I've been debating eh, should i plant it for a while and i thought it was you know i always like lady palms um i think they're really cool species and they look in my opinion at least the fronds look very needle palm like they just develop trunks um i you know i mean very needle palm like if you look here i mean a little bit more divided but I really like them and uh, super cool. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've been debating should I plant it, should I not for a while. And what sort of pushed me to do it was, uh, I believe it was on Mid Atlantic Tropics, which is a, a Facebook forum. A, uh, I saw a post of someone in Occoquan, Virginia, which is uh, probably about uh, 20 minutes south of here. It's, uh, it's still in the DC area, zone 7A, 7B. So um, even though it's 20 minutes south of here, it's pretty much the same zone, maybe ever so slightly warmer, but it's still DC area. So, um, and it showed a picture of a, uh, lady palm, which had just come out of the winter there completely unprotected. I don't know if it was a bad winter, average winter, even a mild winter, uh, sort of surprised me. And, um, the trunks, uh, I guess died or, I mean, one of them was cut through and you could see it looked like it was kind of have live tissue in it, but they cut down the trunks, but it was coming back from the suckers. That's the cool thing about these suckering palms. You have this with, uh, all, pretty much all suckering palms, especially the, you know with hardy ones in a bad winter. Maybe uh, I saw this with one in Virginia Beach. In, uh, camera ops, all other camera ops didn't get damaged at all this past winter. I saw one which didn't look like it had any new growth on its main trunk, probably from a couple of years ago. And then the suckers were just magnificent. So they come back from the suckers, which are these little offshoots. And you can see there are a ton growing there right now on mine. Um, so originally I've been debating should I should I just divide the suckers up and like maybe plant one trunk. I'm just not going to waste that because it could get damaged. I, I mean, I've, I've heard of them dying, you know, they die from sucker division sometimes. So I'm just going to plant the whole thing. And uh, that picture, I mean, uh, look, I mean, despite the fact that the main trunks died, a lady palm surviving unprotected in our winter here is is really incredible. And um, I don't think it's just a fluke. I mean, I think the average winter, even if you don't protect them, they, they may come back from the suckers. And obviously, I think I'm going to wrap the trunks up, which is pretty uh, easy to do. And they also never get that big. Maybe uh, the largest I've heard of is like 15 feet, maybe at the absolute maximum. And they're very slow growing. And um, yeah, I just just decided to do it. So dug the hole already. Uh, when planting a palm, you're going to want to dig a hole at least... Uh, or they say at least twice as wide, sometimes they do a little bit less, but um, twice as large as the uh, the um, sort of soil and roots uh, surrounding the palm. And uh, you can see mine, I probably would need to be repotting it soon, but I'm not gonna have to worry about that because I'm gonna be planting it. And uh, this is here in what I consider sort of my shade palm garden. And uh, you can see it's in the understory, these gorgeous um, uh, Suga canadensis, uh, native Eastern hemlock, uh, state tree of Pennsylvania, actually. And, uh, you know, I, I call my shade palm garden. I have my needle palm here, which is doing awesome. And, uh, my dwarf palmetto, which is sort of getting crowded out a little bit by those, uh, all these, uh, ground cover here. But, uh, sometimes I have to pull that back. Anyways, uh, these are a shade, very shade tolerant palm. And I guess they prefer shade. Although I have seen some in LA that were thriving pretty much in, in, in pretty exposed, uh, somewhat full sun and uh since it likes shade i'm gonna put mine in in the shade here and um yeah let's go ahead and do it and uh see how it looks guys so i got a miracle grow fertilizer here um and uh you know it's important uh the reason it's important to dig at least wider than the uh, pot itself is because oftentimes you will um like sometimes you need to amend the soil thankfully this is a, a wet climate palm so i don't need to amend it with anything like sand to make it more fast draining they uh, can handle a lot of wetness in the roots and everything and it's it's really the cold that i'm more worried about here although i'm not as worried now except i will be protecting mine i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be uh foolish and just not protect it so uh yeah gotta get the palm out now here i'm gonna put the camera down for a second But yeah, this is an incredibly, um, uh, I, I think it's an awesome species of palm here. All right. So you can see nice intact root ball, root ball here and, um, super neat. Uh, and just an awesome palm. I mean, look at that. 
gorgeous clumping palm. And I, I did have to dig up some of these roots and I'm gonna deal with that later. Gotta get these roots out of the way. Anyways, uh, yeah. Gotta get some soil here and then fill in the rest of that with, uh, with just some of the surrounding dirt. And uh, my neighbor's landscapers, they, this is my neighbor's house right here. So it's kind of in a little bit of a sheltered spot between the two house, houses. Uh, my neighbor does have these gardeners that come by frequently, landscapers, I guess. And they, uh, they I don't know what they've done, but you see my the fig back there. They just snapped it. And uh, they also uh, got rid of some of my apuncha, which were right there. And they covered some with fertilizer. They like to put a lot of mulch, new mulch here. So hopefully they don't bother my lady palm. It's sort of on our side, I guess, a little bit. Um, but I mean, obviously they wouldn't remove it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not so worried about, about that, but that is unfortunate. I don't know why they do that. Um, frankly, I, I would, I would never hire someone to do that. Uh, I like doing this stuff myself, but, uh, yeah, you can see this, uh, hemlock branch with covered in cones. These, uh, hemlocks drop a ton of cones. I'm surprised there aren't more seedlings coming up here. I guess, I mean, this is not their, uh, usually they, they uh, live along streams. So, um, yeah, that's uh, sort of their, um, sorry, holding, it's hard to do with the camera, but that's sort of their um, preferred habitat. So I guess they don't, maybe they don't naturalize as easily um, along like in, in this kind of soil environment, but yeah, tons of cones of these things drop. They're much smaller than pine cones, much smaller. All right, I'm, I'm gonna fill in the rest of that uh, later, but you guys get the point. Uh, got the lady palm in the ground and uh, super neat and super excited at the potential of, uh, you know, what, what's gonna, just really excited about what's gonna happen. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Obviously it's the whole palm growing, especially hardy palm growing is an experiment. And that's how I like to think about it. And uh, some palms live and, um, you know, part of part of learning is having some palms suffer sometimes, and I, I don't expect this palm to die, even if I don't protect it in a mild winter at least. Um, but that's part of the experiment, and uh, is, is is testing palms limits. And um, obviously I like to protect mine and be safe, but we're just gonna have to see. And uh, obviously I'll keep you guys updated. This is here under my hemlocks on the side of my house. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching folks. Lady palm, rapus excel, is a great species, and it's incredibly common indoors here, and you'll find it in all sorts of nurseries but um, very rarely planted outdoors, uh, especially really north of North Carolina and Virginia Beach, there's probably a few. DC, there's very, very few. They're very rare here, so much, very common indoors and uh, because of like the filtered sunlight, which is why I put it under these hemlocks. Have a good one, folks. Thanks for watching.